All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Colorado from Mary Kelly. How are you doing, Mary? John, thanks so much for having me with you today. Yes, and this is Mary who is, I mean, she's so many things that it's going to take me a while. So most of the interview is just going to be reciting off all the things Mary has done. <laughs> she's a speaker, author of 13 business and leadership books. And get this, a retired naval commander uh, and a consultant and a professor at the Naval Academy, Air Force Academy. Um, so no better person to talk about leadership during a crisis and the crisis we're in with the virus. So. So Mary, based on all of your, your wealth of experience and obviously spending so many years in the Navy, you obviously have learned an awful lot about leadership and, and, and in the armed forces, I guess, like crisis leadership is the ultimate type of leadership, right? That's exactly right. And this is where I felt very sorry for many of my civilian friends during 9-11 because they didn't know what to do. And mm -hmm. we in the military have contingency plans. Now, we, we hadn't actually planned for that, but we do have contingency plans. And that's what I call the what if. What mm -hmm. if something catastrophic happens? What if you get this external shock to your business? What if you lose that major client who was giving you 60% of your business? The what ifs. And this is what the military thinks about, but many organizations don't. And this pandemic has taken some people by surprise because they did not have their what if contingency plans in place. And it's very easy. I mean, I guess it's 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 up. It's very understandable. It's very easy if things are going along nicely and business is good. Most people don't really want to think about the the what ifs and the downside. So, I mean, how do you actually help people understand that that is part of? And in fact, when things are going well, is probably when you should be planning for surprises. It's interesting, John, that you raise that because if you've ever say sprained your ankle. And the mm -hmm. doctor says, stay off your ankle for six weeks. Suddenly, you've decided you want to run a marathon more than right. anything else. You've never run a day in your life. But all of a sudden, when you can't do something, it makes you want to do something. So right now, many people, because we have had 12 years of amazing growth, lots, mm -hmm. of, lots of great jobs, lots of money, lots of surplus, people didn't have to think about what if. And many of my clients right now said, well, we were doing so well for so long. Well, that was kind of, that was kind of the wave carrying you to shore. You weren't having yeah. to swim very hard. The great thing about right now is it is allowing business leaders to look very hard at what's most important. So now you have to prioritize not only your people, your resources, your money, everything that's important to you, but you also have to figure out a way to triage your time and again, figure out what's most important. It is a terrific time to look at your entire business organization and figure out how can we be better, faster, stronger when we come out of this on the other end. Yeah, and it's an interesting thing because there's also there's a natural reaction. And, and we've seen this in, in conversations with some other businesses is there's a there is a temptation to just kind of batten down the hatches, if you like, or in military terms, I just dive into shelters and just try and wait it out. But I mean, that doesn't really work. You have to you have to figure out how to counterattack at some stage. Right? Yes, our natural tendency, and this is something that actually comes from the habenula of our brain. Mm -hmm. Our brain says, protect yourself, hunker down, you know, isolate yourself, protect what's yours, be scarce. And now is when I talk to my business leaders about if everybody else is doing that, you need to do exactly the opposite because you've got to be more proactive. And many people right now are worried about, well, do I sell during this time? Well, the answer is you continue to provide value to your clients in a way mm -hmm. that works best for them. And you can't be just hunkered down and self-absorbed and very myopic. Our job is to serve our customers. It's to serve our clients. It's to help people. And our job is making sure that we can continue to do that. And that takes strong leadership. And you've got to get your people beyond that place where they're, they're feeling hunkered down and maybe they're working at home and maybe they've got you know five kids at home and everybody needs bandwidth and there's only two computers and the baby's crying and the dogs are barking and the UPS man is arriving with your groceries or whatever is going on. And you've got to get people focused in a way that is more difficult for them than ever. 
You've got to get people on target with those priorities and you've got to instill in them that long-term vision with clear and compelling goals. And that's where leadership kicks in. John, you and I both know in, when things are easy, anybody can sit in the big chair. Yeah. You sure. know, you can put you can put a puppy in the big chair and, <laughs> and everything's going fine because everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. But in times of crisis or challenge or transition or change, that is when you need great leadership. Yeah, for sure. And, and obviously, uh, everybody takes their cues from their leader. So if the leader looks like they're panicked or they look like they're, uh, as you said, if they look like they're just looking for safety first, um, that's what everybody else is going to do, too. But if the leader is looking like they're they're bold, and I think to your point, though, lots of people are at home right now, but you know what? That creates the opportunity for they're actually in a space to have more conversations in many ways than they would if they were in the office and people were coming in and disturbing them. And they're like, oh, I can't talk right now because of all of this. Right now, I think a part of it is a social isolation, but there's mm -hmm. great opportunities for you to have conversations. I totally agree. And this is when people need anchors. People mm -hmm. need the people in their life who are stable and calm and have that vision and know what to do next. People do, even if they don't want to admit it, there's a sense of panic. I was on a panel a week ago and somebody said, I'm just in a panic about what to do next. I said, you know, that's totally normal and totally natural. But once you get out of that panic you and you set a timer, you say, okay, I'm going to panic for an hour. And then as soon as that hour's over, Let's get on with it. Let's start our action plan. Because if you allow yourself to wallow in the panic or feel like a victim or poor me or any of that, guess what? That can take over your entire attitude, your whole vision, mm -hmm. and it permeates the whole organization. So we've got to make sure we recognize the problem. Hey, this is a problem. But we mm -hmm. also then have to put together a series of action steps. And that means we ask our team for input. And that's really important right now is asking your own people what's going on and for input. And with my clients, I'm taking a slightly different approach. I'm creating touch points. Again, using my CRM, I'm mm -hmm. using touch points just to stay in touch. Hey, how you doing? Here's a resource. How you doing? Here's a resource. How you doing? Here's a resource. And, and what I've gotten back is it's just so nice to hear from someone who is calm, who knows what to do, who is helping us take those next steps. Yeah, and I think that's really incredibly important, as you said, is that you get out of maybe too much introspection and too much self-focus and, and, and wallowing, as you say, because that's basically humans, we're fantastic at wallowing in, in self-pity. And look at, you know, and sort of instead look externally, which you should be doing anyway, and saying, okay, how can I help my customers and prospects during this time? And it's not, and it's not sending a, a hey, uh, COVID-19, we're here for you email, because, um, you know, you've already got four thousands of those. It's right. more of, it's more of like, as you say, what could I what could I outreach to my people that is actually of value to them and something that actually could get them maybe focus a little bit away from from the virus? That's exactly right. So I'll tell you one of the things that I did. Um, I have a gal who makes custom cookies for me mm -hmm. and she calls them cookie grams and she's awesome. Her name is Christine at Cookie Charm. And what she did is she created these these cookies with kind of an American flag background. And it just said, um, we're all in this together. Um, Mary says, hope you're doing okay. And here's a, here's a promo code to send a cookie to somebody else. So, oh, nice. so they got a little thing and then they got to send it to somebody else, which is, is again, getting people out of that wallowing and that self pity. Um, the other thing I did this last week was again, using my CRM as I went to all of my top folks, um, my, like my top hundred, and I found something of relevance uh, an update on their industry, their business, their something. And I sent a personalized article to them that just said, hey, hey, John, I was thinking about you and I thought this might be helpful. Again, getting them out of that myopic thinking so that they look forward, not just the next month, not just the next three months, which they're going to be hard, no doubt about it. Yeah. But we've got to remember, this isn't going to last forever. We will see each other again. And when we do, we want to be remembered as that person who during this time of an global crisis, it's really a global issue, mm -hmm. that we were helpful, that we were there, we were providing that real value, not just that, hey, how are you? I've never talked to you before, but I'm here for you. Oh, stop it. None yeah. of us that. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing how many people are here for me right now who I've never heard of before. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. And, you know, those are the people who I'm unsubscribing from their stuff yeah. because it's just 
useless. And Mm -hmm. a lot of speakers, a lot of other speakers, um, you know, we all write books and we travel and all that. They said, well, you know, I can do this stuff um, virtually. Like, well, I'm not, I'm not just telling people I'm doing it. I'm, I created a series of 10 weeks of just free webinars just to show mm-hmm. folks, not just I can do it, I am doing it, but I am not just here for you, but here's stuff that your team needs right now with tools that would normally be for sale and everything is free. And you know what? If it takes a year or two or three for us to do any work, that's fine. But right now we're all in this together and we've got to help each other get out of it. Yeah, and I think that's so. I think it's so incredibly important that you look at ways, as we were saying, to add value right now. I started a, a couple of weeks ago. I started doing these one-minute remote working tips because I realized that we, as a company, have uh, we we made a strategic decision about six years ago to try and be as virtual a company as we could for a variety of, of reasons. So. We have a lot of experience in that, and therefore, when things happen, we didn't miss a beat. But then I also realized lots of people hadn't done it before, so there's something of value to give to people, tips that maybe things that we've gone through that you mightn't think about uh, to help you through this. So, I mean, I totally agree with you, and the fact is you can be practical and proactive and find ways of actually doing things and modeling and showing and adding value uh, right now that's going to build a reservoir of goodwill for the future. That's exactly right. And many people, again, in this time of scarcity, they're cutting certain things. And some of Mm -hmm. them need to be cut, let's face it. Some people were spending money not very mindful of long-term possible consequences. And so some of those things need to be cut. Where I caution people about cutting, though, other people. Now, some people, this is a good opportunity to let people go that needed to go. However, mm-hmm. if you've got a great team in place, now is not the time to cut. Now is the time that you want to support your people through this. How you treat your employees through this situation is how they're going to treat your customers. And I think that is a huge point to remember long term that, you know, and, and like you, I, took me a long time to get the right team of people together so that I have a viable business. And I want to make sure that those people are still with me in a year. So I called everybody together right away. I said, look, I think this is going to last probably a year. There's going to be some decreased you know, revenue. And this is my plan for us to move forward. And this is my commitment to you. And they all went, oh, well, that was really cool. And mm-hmm. You know, that I mean, that was a little bit unexpected when all their friends are losing their jobs or losing their hours, restaurants are cutting people left and right. Disney just told, you know, 43,000 people that they're going to be out of a job, but will pay health care, which I thought was cool that they're paying health care. You know, now is when we have to be looking long term at the team we want in a year. So I, I try to tip it on its head. If right now the economy was booming, you'd be planning on your succession plan in two years, three years, five years, 10 years, yeah. we still have to look at our leadership and our talent bench for three years, five years, 10 years down the road. Just because we're in this place of scarcity right now doesn't mean that we're not planning for the future. We are. Yeah. And it's also going to give us great insight, uh, not just into ourselves, but also into the people around us and those who are able to step up right now. And maybe, maybe out of this people are going to see uh, leadership potential in people that they never realized it before. Maybe they never noticed before. And one thing I will say about uh, the companies who've had to go remote, remote can be, or virtual, can can be a great equalizer. You can suddenly discover that maybe you've overlooked people because maybe they're not as vocal as other people or whatever. But when it come when you go virtual, virtual, I find is a great equalizer. I could not agree with you more because, again, when people are working remotely or virtually, you are basing your opinion on them based on results, not yeah. just who's being sweet to you that day, who, you know, refilled the coffee pot, you know, who maybe is pleasant to work around, but they're not producing mm-hmm. nearly yeah. as much as that person who's super quiet, um, keeps to themselves, but wow, they're productive. So again, we're moving into the future because a lot of this is not going to go away. 59% of Americans recently surveyed said, you know, I like working from home and mm-hmm. I would like to, I would like to do more of this in the future, whether that looks like two days or three days or five days a week, because I'm not having the commute. I get to get more done. I am more focused when I'm at work. I'm not interrupted. Um, I finally have everything set up. We as humans are wildly adaptable. Once we get set up to a new habit or routine, we're like, oh, this could work. And again, moving in the future, we are judging people. And I do mean judging based on the results they're providing and the outcomes, not just their personality at work. 
Yeah, and that's what I think is so important now is that uh, is that uh, you know leaders now look at it from that perspective, from the results perspective, and they really start to reach out and, and build relationships with those people who perhaps they have neglected a little bit over the years because, as, as we said, maybe they're not the maybe they're not the small talk water cooler, maybe they're not the one who's leaning on your office door with some great story or whatever. But as you say. The output is there. So I think it's, and I agree with you, there's going to be a lot more people doing this virtually. And I think they should, to be honest, because I think it, it allows, if your business can support it, it allows people to choose where they want to live and not force people to live in high cost areas because they're commutable to the office. I could not, again, agree more. And then when we do get together, we're going to really appreciate each other more. Yeah. And I love, I love the idea that we, we are better at appreciation. We are more grateful for time with each other, that our connections are made stronger, not weaker by this. But we also need to recognize as leaders, it does take more time for you to reach out to people. It's not the mm -hmm. accidental meeting in the hallway. Yeah. You have to make an effort. You have to make a schedule. You have to create a new habit and routine to create those touch points with all of your people to make sure that you are providing the leadership that they need. Yeah. And it, and that's uh, for me, that's a good thing, too, because it means, as you say, you have to be more thoughtful in you have to actually think about what you're going to say. And the reason why you're calling someone as opposed to just, you know, pleasantries as you pass in the corridor, which ultimately are meaningless. Uh, so I guess at this time of crisis, a leadership leadership, one of the biggest things is communication. Absolutely. You have to communicate more. You have to make sure your vision and your goals are more clear. You have to give people deadlines and you have to hold them to this. So the bar is not lowered because of this. You can be more understanding about their particular situation. That's empathetic leadership and we need mm -hmm. that. But you also have to let people know, hey, this is a great time for us to retool, rethink, re-engage, redesign. You know, this is a terrific reset button for us as a business. And now is when I need your talent. I need your great ideas. I need your energy. I need your enthusiasm. I need your passion. All those things is when I need you more. And not only do we as leaders have to communicate better, but we've also got to be better listeners to our team. We have to hear what they're saying, also what they're not saying. And again, in a lot of those meetings face-to-face, -face, the very loud people get heard a lot. Yep. The quieter people, maybe not so much. So now is a really good opportunity, as you said, to make it equal. This is a great equalizer for our teams overall, but we as leaders have to lead that communication. No, I'm absolutely. And I think the other part is, too, is when things are good, we overlook a lot of efficiencies because we're, uh, things are good. I'm not going to bother with that. This is a great time to go and look at the inefficiencies in your business, to look at things like digital processes, what you can automate, all of those things that everybody's paid lip service to, but never a lot of people haven't done because, well, business is good. I don't need to look at it. So there are so many opportunities for companies to come out of this stronger. That's exactly right. I've got a new product out called Pivot. And right now, is it, it, I was working on it before, but now it really highlights it. It made me accelerate the process like everything else. So pivoting is enhancing your purpose, figuring out what you're going to influence greater in the future, making sure that in a volatile situation, you are leading that and looking for the opportunities. That's the O. And the opportunities also include what things we're going to get rid of, what things you know, maybe they've run their course, maybe they are mm -hmm. obsolete. And then looking at the tools, training and technology that will push us into the future better. You know, now is a time to say, you know what, everything's on the table. In the short run, it's very hard to change things, especially when they're going well. But in the long run, everything's a variable. So that means you can change anything about what you do. Yeah, and I think that's the most important thing is, is, is take this as an opportunity. Yes, it's a crisis. And yes, there's different impacts to different organizations and different people, but there are so many opportunities to relook at your business, to look at the inefficiencies. To, as you say, what is the hardest thing for people to do? And that is stop doing things. So what are the things that you need to stop doing in your business? Because normally, you know, when you have a planning meeting and you say, anybody got new ideas of things we should do? Everybody's hands go up, their whiteboards are full. And then you say, okay, what should we stop doing? And there's silence. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, I call it the SDS disease, stop doing stupid. Because yeah. if you're the boss and you walk around your workplace and you're like, hey, John, how you doing? John's going to go, good. 
Hey, Nick, how you doing? Good, great, fine. Hmm. You, you get those answers, monosyllabic answers. Good, great, fine. But if you walk around and ask people, what did you do today that wasted your time? What mm. did you do today that was part of a process that you think, wow, this really needs to be improved? What did you do today that was stupid? They will tell you if you're willing to listen. And that's where leaders can make a huge difference. <laughs> and I think that's fantastic, man. I think you're a great place to end, right? If you do nothing else during this, reach out to your people and say, what did you do today that was stupid? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, my name is John Golden, uh, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM. Thank you, Mary Kelly, for this. All of Mary's information will be in our contributor bio. But before we go, just tell people a little bit more about yourself. So, uh, John, as you know, I spent 26 years on active duty in the Navy. I was able to lead multicultural teams um, throughout Asia. And uh, my PhD is actually in economics. My company tagline is we improve profit growth. And there's a ton of free resources um, on my website, which is productiveleaders.com forward slash free. And this is because, John, I was using my website as a cloud before there was a cloud. So that's why mm -hmm. I put all the forms I use all the time with my clients. And you are welcome to them. That's fantastic. Again, Mary, listen, thanks so much for joining us today. John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM. See you all again soon.